What's up everyone, Jeremy here from mtgheadquarters.com bringing you your Sealed Saturday. This the first week of December. What I like to do is crack the packs. This is exactly how I do sealed events, to be honest with you. Let's crack, I look for any um, bombs that we need to build around. Gray Merchant's pretty good. Polish Crusher. Uh, so-so, not build a red green is good, but you've got to have a really good, you've really got to have all the pieces. And our rare is, ooh, a miscutter Hydra. Okay, red green is seem viable. Do, do, do. I'm just bomb hunting right now. And then we'll uh, sort colors and we'll come back a oh, foil, perforos emissary. Very good, very, like I say, it's always good to get those foils because uh, another green rare, here, red green, look at all these red greens. Time to feed. Yeah, red green's looking pretty saucy. All right. Although you never know. We have a whip of Erebos as our rare. I've seen anecdotally some pretty good black. But uh, not anything that I can't live without. Although Whip of Erebos is definitely a pain in the ass. We've got another red rare. Look at all these red green. Too bad um, Titan of Eternal Fire is really not not that great of a card. I mean, it's all right. Here's another gray merchant. Oh boy. <laughs> Now that's a that's a nice little <laughs> that's a nice little run there of cards. Try to fade. This is a really good uh, white black pack. That was nuts. So uh, I'm gonna color sort right now, and uh, we'll come back and we'll see what we got. All right, everybody. So I've sorted everything. We'll start out with the multicolor. Try to fates a Kron Hoplite, Kragma Warcaller, Chimera and Paulus Crusher are all playable. Most now mostly uh, playable in their respective color combinations. So we may have some uh, good pieces there. Uh, no real artifacts. Opaline Unicorns never bad for fixing uh, Opaline, but <clears throat> nothing going on really there. Blue obviously Voyage's End is really good. Nulls are fine, but there's just... Oh, we got another two-color. Black, white, Century of the Underworld. Um, Benthic Giant, Gainsane, Mnemonic Wall. Thassa's Emissary, Omen Speaker, playable. Triton Tactics, but there's just not enough playables here in blue. I mean, you, you might consider splashing it, but you've really got four good blue cards. Um, that's not, not enough for sealed. White has some good stuff, but it's pretty weak. Scholar of Aetheros is okay. The, the, we've got a Divine Verdict, Wingsteed Rider, Calvary, Pegasus, God Willing, all very good. Observant, Alcide is okay. Um, Dauntless Onslaught is very good. Vanquish Falls mediocre. The Glare of Heresy, obviously, is situational. But the, the takeaways for white is there's two Divine Verdicts and a couple of decent creatures, but uh, I don't think there's enough there. You know, you could work with it if you're really, really strong um, and you just wanted a support color. For black, uh, Baleful, Idelion, Eidolon, very good. Disciple of uh, Phoenix, very good. Gray Merchant, obviously very good. Loathsome, Katibolas. <laughs> Uh, it's fine. I, I mean, I would never... I very rarely put it. Lash the Whip is very good. Whip of Erebos is very good. Cutthroat Maneuver is situational. It can be good if you if you need to trigger Heroic. Um, Ordeal of Erebos is good. Another Lash of the Whip, very good. Boon of Erebos is good. We've got some good black stuff here. Sip of Hemlock, another Gray Merchant. Uh, gray Merchants are great. However, I don't have a lot of... I mean, outside... Well... I have some black permanents, the Ideal Eidolon, the Phoenix, obviously the Whip of Erebos, 
So gray merchants could be productive. Um, let's see what we got going on in red. I originally, when I was opening the packs, I thought, you know, green and red look pretty good with the Polis Crusher. There are a ton of good, or there are a ton of red rares. Unfortunately, they were not the great, not very good. Obviously, it was no Storm Breath Dragon or anything like that. Dragon Mantle is good. Um, Two-headed Cerebus is very good with Dragon Mantle. Honestly, it's a it's practically a deck building technique in draft these days. Um, Spark Jolt situational. Minotaur Skull Cleaver is very good for aggro. Titan of Eternal Fire again if you're building around it. Rage of Perforos, um, it's not terrible, but it's not great. Um, Perforos Emissary is very good. So again, we have the same kind of problem we have with blue. Uh, we have more tonnage in red, but there's only like three or four cards that I would absolutely want in a deck, and that would be Perforos Emissary, um, maybe the two-headed with the Dragon Mantle, maybe that. Um, the Minotaur Skull Cleaver, Rage of Perforos is even... Uh, an iffy card. So there's just not, there's quantity there, but there's just not quality. I and mean, going red does open up the Polis Crusher, Polis Crusher to us, but uh, the real strength in this pool, in my opinion, is green. You've got a Nemesis of Mortals, which is great. Volpine Goliath, I mean, people play it. You don't have to. Miscar Hydra is obviously very, very good. Order of Nylea, great. Time to Feed, great. Savage Surge, great. Another Time to Feed, great. Said Scorpion, great. Voyage Insider, also great. I mean, these are all just good. Defend the Hearth is not. Um, Nessie and Corsair is actually not bad either. Um, another Said Scorpion. Uh, Staunch Hearted Warrior. And an and an and an Enthusa. Um, Enthusa is not that great. I've played against her a, a billion times, and only probably once or twice ever did somebody activate her mana ability in a, in a way that bothered me. That gave me trouble, but um, she's still a five mana four five with that threat. So I, I can't I can't see how you don't play her. But you've definitely got some great green cards. So I think green makes the cut here. And really, what I'm uh, considering here is green black. Um, given what we have in black, uh, I think it complements what we have in green. Um, green green white is also possible here. The Wingsteed is good for Heroic, the Double Divine Verdicts, but you know what White offers kind of ends right there. So, you know, Divine Verdicts are good, don't get me wrong, but um, for Black, I mean, you have Grey Merchant, Sip of Hemlock, yes. Um, Scourge Mark, I like. Boon of Erebus, I like. Whip, Whip of Erebus, Ordeal. Whip, or yeah, Whip of Erebus, what did I say? What did I call that other thing? Lash of the Whip, I'm sorry. Another Lash. I mean, these are all good. Um, I'm going to make kind of a cut around cards that would make my first cut. Staunch Heart of Warrior, of course. Sedge Scorpion's great. Nylea's Disciple's good. Voyaging Satyr, Sedge. Both time, all these pump spells, combat tricks. Time to Feed and Savage Furs all make it. I mean, these are just... This is just a really good pool. You know, you don't often, even though the uh, Loathsome does fit into our black-green uh, color choice, you know, it, uh, it doesn't really, f you know, it's not that good even with the ability. I mean, we have a, a, an initial pool of 1, 2, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 25 in the initial pool. This is the pool I would go with. I might actually throw Opaline Unicorn in here. And why? Because there's a lot of cards with double color, double green, double black. Um, so maybe I put that. Let's see. So let me clear out the... Uh, those that didn't make the cut. And, you know, I think honorable mention goes to what white had to offer. And if you played green-white and you just played these um, Observant, Alcides, God's Willing, Calvary Pegasus. I mean, there's like five or five or six playables here. There's enough going on in green that you could play it. But usually when I play white-green, I'm kind of playing white-green heroic. And I just don't think we have, we don't really have, you know, we don't have it going on 
in white green heroic. We have a few heroic cards, but not enough to build a deck around. Um, i would probably cut the Goliath, first of all. Um, let's go ahead and do our, our mana curve, as you guys uh, requested. Um, you like to see that. Two said scorpions, that's very good uh, for one drops, including a uh, bale, Baleful Eidolon for a two drop. That's very good. I mean, those are basically um, removal, right? <laughs> Uh, you got three things with Death Touch in this deck. You could really bother some people, uh, which is really why why we do this thing, right? Uh, our one and two drop slots are great. Our three drop slot is excellent. It's chock full of um, removal spells. We have a little bit of ramp with the Voyaging Seder, which I like. Let's see here. Now we'll go through it with you. We have a couple four drops, including the Whip of Erebos, which is excellent. And our five drop slot is, is stocked. Five and six are pretty good. All right. Six, five, four. <laughs> We have a Boon of Erebus, two said Scorpions, and our one drops. <clears throat> I think that's very, very good. Our two drops are Savage Surge, Voyaging Seder, Order of Nylea's. I have a Miscutter Hydra in there for sorting purposes. Scourge Mark, Ordeal of Erebus, Baleful Eidolon. We have uh, Eidolon, Baleful Eidolon. Good stuff in the two drop. Three drop, we have two Time Defeats. Those are automatic. Nessie and Corsair. It's either that or the fixing. I think I'm, if I'm going to make a cut. Then we go to our fours. We have Whip of Erebus, Disciple of Phoenix, Staunch Heart of Warrior, and Nylea's Disciple. Um, you could cut Nylea's Disciple, honestly, if you wanted. Uh, from a fixing, or from a... I don't know. It's, it's nice to get that little bump of life gain. On our five drops, we have Anthusa. Gray Merchant, Lash of the Whip times two. Two Gray Merchants. Pretty damn good. Pretty damn good five slot, I think. And our six slot is a Nemesis of Mortals and a Sib of Hemlock. So for removal, you know, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen creatures. In our pool here, that's enough. If I'm cutting anything, it's going to be one of the vanilla. Let's see what we got. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Cut 2. I'll risk it here, and I'm going to cut the Opaline Unicorn. Um, and probably... <sighs> I like Scourge Mark because you get to draw a card. I don't know. It'd be a tough cut, but I would probably cut. I mean, it's just another way to trigger the few creatures we have that have Heroic. Although Time to Feed with Heroic is an absolutely great, great thing. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 creatures. We can't cut any more creatures, probably. So I'm probably going to cut... Oh, boy. Yeah, I'm going to have to cut the Scourge Mark. But this is our 23. This is pretty good. I don't know how it would play, honestly. Um, it's tough. Like, I don't know what to... You know, we've got kind of a mixed bag here of of stuffs. We've got enough spells to trigger heroic. We've got enough uh, combat tricks to win some uh, to win some battles if we have an underpowered creature. Um, you know, we've got two great. We've got enough removal for sure. Two gray merchants, time to feed, or ah, two time to feeds, a sip of hemlock, and two lash of the whips. That's hella removal. I guess we win with our Miscutter Hydra, 
we go heroic. We've got some great stuff here. I mean, all the said scorpions. Early, they just buy you time. Late, uh, they are super annoying because they can block off giant creatures, you know. Or actually, what I like to do is a late game, I'll put like an ordeal on a said scorpion, something like that, so I can pump up and have and have death touch, you know. So it is versatile. I think uh, this is a pretty solid deck. I, I would predict, uh, you know, you could easily win two of three matches with this. I don't know how it would play. I, green black is not a color I normally would play, but if I got the sealed pool, this is exactly what I would have built. So if this was helpful for you, you know, please take a second to uh, leave a comment in the section down below. I know it's a pain in the ass now, but I really appreciate it. If you guys like Sealed Saturdays and you want it to continue, make sure you uh, crush that thumbs up button. It means a lot to me. I really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, we'll talk to you again real soon. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Check out some of our most popular playlists. Everything from MTG Vlogs, gameplay video, new product breaks, and some insane vintage openings. And if you haven't yet, here's your opportunity to crush that subscribe button to join the fastest growing Magic the Gathering channel on YouTube. Thanks again, and we'll see you real soon.